Throughout my last six months of fishing, I've learned there's a fine line between passion and obsession. One can bring joy and energy to your life, the other can consume it from the inside out. There is no way. <gasps> That's it. That is it. That looks big. I first began walking this lake in springtime. Knowing nothing of the giant creatures living in its depths, I wasn't sure I'd ever fish there. But since my friend Cal lived locally, one day in early summer, I decided to get myself a ticket. Name, address, signature, and date of birth in there for me. Cool. Good guy. Super. Cheers. Only once I'd acquired my membership did I begin thinking about the challenge ahead of me. A huge sheet of water and a relatively unknown stock of carp. This is one half. Oh no, yeah, one half. Behind that building is another load and then underneath that bridge over there is like 70 acres. <laughs> on the other side, oh, it's just silly. Walking the lake on hot days gave me a better understanding of where the fish liked to be. However, there was a number of out-of-bounds areas where you weren't allowed to fish. The lake itself was constructed for flood prevention purposes, with large sluices allowing excess water to leave the nearby river and be stored in the lake. In the shallow bird feeding zones, I spotted fish regularly, but park officers were quick to chase off anyone who tried casting at the waiting carp. Of course, this whole section is no fishing as well. So whilst there are fish here that look incredibly catchable, the nearest I can get to this bit is all the way down the far end. From this point, round to the opposite corner was strictly out of bounds to anglers. The owners of the park sure knew how to make this a frustratingly difficult lake to fish. I spent a handful of long days waiting to see a carp jump or swirl down on the actual fishing bank, but unsurprisingly, they seemed to visit this area very rarely. I'd heard a few rumours that there was a massive common in the lake, somewhere in the region of 50 pounds or more. This convinced me to get a move on and start pre-baiting. It always tends to be the larger waters, the ones with an element of unknown that really get me fired up. My most memorable captures have often come after cracking the code somewhere expansive and challenging. Initially, I was going to bring just a marker rod and some bait. My first session could wait until I'd found a nice spot and fed them a few times. That said, upon actually beginning my search, I suddenly felt a little out my depth. I don't fish very many places with water this clear. And I've got a view here of like the no fishing area down there. And then also the bit which I can fish, which is sort of this area. Did you see that? It was a bird, a coot, never mind. I did eventually stop paddling around and began casting the marker float, aiming to find a little gap in the weeds. I didn't even get to fill the head down, it just went straight into weeds. Did I just chuck that onto a clear spot? I'd managed to cast into a deep gully, one I'd seen on Google Maps. This was quite a long way down the margin, but it meant although I was fishing a permitted swim, my bait was going to land closer to the out of bounds area. I can drag, drag the lead back across the bottom without it actually clogging up in anything, which is a really good sign. By walking up the bank some hundred yards or so, I could feed the area I'd found more easily. Waste pouch locked and loaded. 
Initially, I spread some boilies around the spot, but realized I really wanted to bait with smaller particles if I was to draw in roach and bream to clear out the silt and weeds, making presentation for the cart more easy. They're always here, man. Always swimming around this bit. As usual, I passed numerous carp on my way past the pub, some big ones too. That was hot. <laughs> that was really warm, but I managed to get the bait in and find a spot that I'm happy to fish. And my van's making a beeping noise. All done, time to head home, get some work done, and then I'll be down for my first session, I think in about a week or two. It was much more than a week later when I actually managed to squeeze in my first session. In fact, I'd returned to the lake three more times to introduce bait, simply because I was passing the area whilst on my way home from other filming trips or meetings up north. I focus now on feeding particles like hemp, peanuts and a few tigers, and the bait was doing its job. <laughs> this is my campaign, Spawn. This matters to me. Huh? Having been told that the lake was a very tricky water, I knew that pre-baiting would stack the odds in my favour. And even though most of my bait was probably being eaten by small fish, their activity would no doubt attract the carp. There it is, the part lake. Can't wait to get around there, but I'm gonna wait until Cal gets here so we can get some footage of me setting up. A million birds, a million people, a hundred acres. <laughs> Good luck to you. Crystal clear water. <laughs> and a bunch of carp that just wanna live in this no fishing zone. What are my chances? Um, very minimal, mate. <laughs> Heading down to my baited swim, I kind of knew this was going to be a long campaign. In the past, I've fished lakes for upwards of two years before catching what I want, and this place was probably one of those sorts of waters. Although I was a little apprehensive, your first session on a lake is pretty special, especially when it contains fish much larger than anything I'd caught previous. Donk. Donk. Yeah, baby. I'm a bit confused because I haven't seen anyone else fishing this half of the lake. I've only seen people over by the bridge. So either they know something that I don't, or I'm gonna catch tonight. The wind got it. Man, the weed in here is so bad. My first rod had gone out lovely, landing perfectly on the clear spot. However, as the wind grew stronger, my lack of long range casting experience became quite obvious. How am I gonna recast in the dark? That's the one, surely. Oh, I can't see the float. I think it went on the wrong side of the float. I've got the float. Oh no! I'd gone and snagged my marker float, <laughs> pulling it and my other line off the spot. It's gone underwater because I pulled on that and the two are tangled together. Oh, <laughs> oh no! <laughs> All right, lesson learned. Bring the marker float in. I've been a man, mate. I've decided I'm going to put a bigger hook on as well. I'm going to put size fours on because that, um, that size six starts to look a little bit small when you think about like 
playing a fish through all of that weed. I decided to wait for the wind to pass and in the meantime get some bait out. Right, we'll start off with, I don't know, two kilos. As I tried my best to bait accurately, a strong northerly wind built into somewhat of a storm. Actually casting my rigs was now going to be quite tricky, but I needed them to be set perfect ready for my first night. Oh. Receiving a bite so soon I was shocked and even more baffled when I realised both rods were pulling away at once. I noticed that somehow my limes had wrapped together and become covered in weed and algae. This is bad, really bad. And somewhere in amongst the carnage, there was a fish pulling on the end. Okay, so because the lines are like knitted together, I now have to do something insane. Let's cut that side and then retie it retie it to itself. <laughs> this is what you call an absolute nightmare. And at this rate, this is going to end with a lost carp. Oh, I don't think it's a little one. I can't reel in any more line. This is not good. This is really good. With the line completely jammed in the rod tip and my reel, the only option I had was to hand line the fish towards the net. Oh my gosh, I can see the fish now. And it's in. <laughs> easy as that. If only I could say it was easy. Well, on a positive note, my first session had produced a bite and a spectacular one at that. That's a good start. <laughs> yeah, what do you reckon the size is? I reckon it's bang on 30. You reckon? Yeah. Mad. Because it's, it's really hurting my wrists. <laughs> oh yeah. Fish number one though. You can't ask for more than that, can you? Number one of 100. <laughs> oh yeah, well you're going to kick up all of the, all the carp. All of the carp in the lake, yeah. With my friend Cal living just five minutes away, it was so nice to have him pop by and take photos of the fish. And at that moment, it felt like the same would be possible on my next session too. However, just half an hour later, I encountered a slight problem. There's no, absolutely nothing in the rule book about that. Not allowed to bait up. Not allowed to be here. Well, what about walking past? One of the bailiffs had seen me baiting up and told me to stop. Apparently, as this was not a permitted fishing spot, I wasn't allowed to bait from here either. However, feeding the birds from this spot was allowed, and that gave me food for thought. Time to go home. Driving home, I could only think of one thing, and just three or four days later, I was back. We're pre-baiting again. This time, Alex has come up with me. What have you got in there, mate? Lead. We were on our way to my old friend Alan's wedding, but a slight detour to feed the ducks was in order. Do you find you um, forget anything with fishing already, or is it just ingrained? Um, it's an interview. Something. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did feel like 
<laughs> that was actually a perfect question interview. <laughs> you know, I mean, I've been a fisherman all my life and it just never leaves me. The, the skills that I learned back when I was in cold training, uh, they, ne they never go. And I think they'll be here. Alan and Chloe's wedding was wonderful, made far better by the proximity of carp, and the following week saw me back in my baited swim. I actually got stomach cramps right now, which is really making me in a lot of pain. Oh boy, look at the size of him. I'm hurting so bad, but I'm also really happy to have one in the net. What I had disregarded as stomach cramps was in fact something far more serious. Although it was the least of my worries at the time, I was distracted by battling the floating weeds and getting fishing again. Oh, my line was floating. My line was floating that whole time. No. Now realising why this part of the lake was devoid of other anglers, I set about sinking my lines better to try and dodge the floating algae. Throughout the day I had to recast multiple times, clearing the weeds off my lines intermittently. A back lead helped pull the braid down, but it wasn't long before the wind brought more problematic weed rafts into my swim. Oh, these weeds are destroying me. I made a little barrier over here to try and stop the weeds from wiping up my lines, but it really hasn't worked. I always find that when you're out in the world, facing any sort of physical challenges, the mind goes quiet and leaves you to it. I think there's a blessing behind most curses, including floating weeds. then. Yes! That morning I went to visit the angler in the next swim down, but realising he was asleep, decided I'd do the photos of my catch alone. That said, he did tell me to wake him up if I needed a hand with anything, but something inside said no, so I left him to it. This is a bit tricky, this self-filming. Oh wow, the colours on this thing are incredible. Realising what an impressive carp I'd just caught, my indecisive self finally chose to go and wake him up. <clears throat> Morning. Morning. Hello mate. Hey you good? Yeah, sorry to bother. Oh, I won't, I won't sleep, uh, I'll be honest with you. Um, I've got one. Yeah. And it's a cool one. Oh mate, brilliant. I love this reveal, it's like Christmas. It is like Christmas, yeah. isn't it? Every time you do it. Oh, we put his door slap and everything. Wow, let's get it, let's get it. Yes. Oh, <laughs> wicked. I really appreciate your help, man. It's always nerve wracking when you come on a new place, whether or not the locals are going to be hostile towards you or whether you're going to be able to get along with them and enjoy your time on the lake, not looking over your shoulder. So yeah, the fact the guy is super friendly and helped me out with pictures this morning is awesome. <laughs> I'm very, very happy right now. Having now caught a few, my campaign was off the mark, but on my next session, the wind had spun round and was now blowing towards the opposite corner. This is where most anglers tended to fish, so I had to go and explore it.
there we are. Finally got my rods out. Took me a little while to decide on where I'm fishing. There's some sort of structure out there where those two boys are. And I'm fairly certain it's like a piece of rock or something. I'm, I'm actually not certain at all. I've got no idea what's out there. But it looked good. And I lobbed three rods at it and spotted a load of crushed up boilies over the top. And we'll see what happens tonight. What happened was that I received bite after bite, but not from the target species. Perhaps the shoal of bream was here for all the bait regular anglers were piling in down this end. Yeah, look, Spom just went into, no, it's someone else. Cal, it's someone else. During that two night session, I watched as no less than six different fishermen turned up to pre-bait, the same hundred yard section of bank. Oh, there's no chance of catching if all that bait's going in as well. I certainly didn't feel confident in this area anymore, but I always tried to put 100% into my fishing, so I stuck at it and kept recasting after each bream. It dawned on me that I'd probably wasted my session in an area of the lake overfished by regular anglers. As I packed away, I knew I'd be back in my pre-baited swim next time round. This was compounded when a friend sent me footage of what he said was the biggest fish in the lake, spotted the same day outside the pub, maybe 600 yards from my swim. With other commitments and filming trips elsewhere in the country, my next session was to be at the end of July. In the meantime, I tried to call in at the lake at least a couple of times a week to bait up. Not easy with it being over three hours from my house. I kept searching the whole venue, even the little back channels and creeks that connected to the lake, but I knew where I needed to be, back in my pre-baited spot. With consistent feeding and a lot of miles covered in my van, I'd been able to take a silty area with light weeds and turn it into a polished gravel spot. Committing to one venue like this was something I've rarely done before. I dropped most other filming projects and while just about keeping my business ticking over, every last bit of energy was focused on getting the most from this campaign. Whenever I'm baiting up here, I'm always looking around me all the time, nervous that I'm gonna spot one of the other anglers, or rather, that they're gonna spot me. All baiting done, and I don't think anybody saw me. Bream on. No, I can smell it from here. As well as the bream, I landed a couple more carp that night, but amongst the focus on my fishing, I'd somewhat disregarded my health. Bad news, really bad news. I am very sick and I've got to go home. So I've got to somehow sort out these fish. Fishing wise, it's going good. But I don't feel very well. And then get home and hope I don't end up in the hospital again. Just two weeks prior, I'd been discharged from hospital with the doctor believing I had kidney stones. And of course, I'd forgotten to take his advice and that day found myself in excruciating pain and back at accident and emergency. Hello, Carl. Oh, you're vlogging now, so you're, you're not dying anymore. Apparently it's really important to drink lots of water. Really? Yeah. Didn't know that from you, the first time. You should drink lots of water, Carl, or else you get very bad pain. Oh, right. Good job, but I always carry water uh, with me. Well done. I'm alive, brother. How are we feeling? Much better than I was yeah? a couple of hours ago. Okay. <laughs> so are you going back on Willem then? Uh-huh. <laughs> 
Cal may have thought I was joking, but with the spot doing bites, I had to return. Maybe I am a little crazy. <laughs> Parking in the normal spot. That makes me happy. I've just seen something swirling. In amongst the bird life and some other hefty carp, it was here I spotted for the first time the big common. I'd have put that fish at almost 60 pounds, and it was at that moment the obsession truly took hold. Feels good to be back. <laughs> oh. Wow. To be honest, I was overjoyed to not be in pain anymore. The doctors had administered some pretty hefty medicine and I was still a little lightheaded. At this point, I was still pretty poor at long range casting. Come on then, land this one on the spot. But I'm fairly certain there was something in those painkillers that made me even worse. I went here. This is the one that's gonna go though. Ooh. Today wasn't a great day. I've really 100% learned my lesson now. I have to stay hydrated. I have to look after myself even when I'm out here and I'm fishing and I'm loving it and I'm distracted by the angling. From now on, I'm drinking twice as much water and I'm eating twice as healthy because there's carp to catch, man. I can't be having hospital visits distracting me from my fishing. Hello there. Oh, the lads have arrived. How's it going, man? Um, what, what do I owe you? How much? You sure? Yeah. <laughs> We're recording, so what is, what's your Instagram? Warren Catches. There we go. Your shout out is done. Warren Catches. Warren Catches. And he also brings chips to the lake. No, thanks guys. Appreciate that. With my new healthy diet getting off the mark with a battered sausage and chips, I decided I'd start being healthy tomorrow and enjoyed that evening with the guys I'd met up at the lake. The park had got under my skin and the fishing was just building up and up. Oh, is that fish? I just fell in the water. <laughs> I fell straight out of the bivy and went straight <laughs> over my waders. <laughs> Mate, every night. Every night. I can't believe I put six kilos of bait out and I've had a bite at 11.30 again. It's just like, how many of these am I going to catch then until I get one of the big girls, like one of the actual monsters? I'm dripping wet, look. Oh. Up until now, I'd mostly been fishing with pre-tied chod rigs straight from the pack as they lay down great over the light weeds. But now my spot was clearer, I took six inch lengths of boom and tied them to the chod section. This made for a perfect stiff hinge rig, which tends to give better hook holds than a choddy. Normally see a fish or two around here, but they're not here today. Hey man, how's it going? Right, yeah. Hang on a minute. <laughs> I recognize that voice. <laughs> I'd met none other than Scott Lloyd, a guy who ranks as one of the best big carp anglers in the country. It doesn't seem to matter where or what he's fishing for, the biggest and rarest in the lake quickly tend to fall to his rods. He explained that he was at the park for one very specific fish, the big mirror. Well, that was news to me, because I thought the big one was a common. Oh, oh hello. Hey, how you doing, mate? I see a wet mat, does that mean you've got something? Man, pissed out. Oh. <laughs> oh. Chatting with one of the local anglers, it became clear. The big mirror was a very special carp. 
That's why I'm here for that mirror. I, they're common, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, it's like it's got that deep Italian look to it. You don't get many of them these days. No, know? there ain't many like that, is there? It had got me thinking. Scott wanted to catch the big mirror, but there was no way to choose what fish took your bait on such a massive water. I wondered how I'd feel if Scott was to catch my target fish, the big common. Of course, with fishing, there's skill involved for sure, but luck plays a massive part too. I had something already going at the lake, an abated spot that was producing bites. Surely, if I played the numbers game, it would be me landing the big common. And deep down, I felt confident. That looks big. Fish after fish hit my net and sleepless nights started to become commonplace. Repeating the same process every session had me in a rhythm and one which resulted in most mornings being time to take quite a few photos. I definitely think I'm finding myself falling in love with carp fishing again. Look at that. Absolute dream fishing. Oh, I nearly got wet. That's it, another session comes to an end. It's time to go to my real home. Although this swim feels like home at the moment because I've been here for quite a few days. But yeah, uh, work is calling and I've got to catch up on a whole load of stuff. Leaving the lake and swapping it for the office didn't feel good. Motivation to work was a little low and the video clip of the big common was replayed more often than anything I was supposed to be editing. The only place I wanted to be was back at the park. I'm hoping those floating weeds won't be such a pain now that that guy's started removing them. He's got an awful lot more to go, but it's a start. On the topic of the kidney stone pain, my healthy eating and drinking more water seemed to be working. And despite a few sessions resulted in blanks, I wasn't going to let that get me down. Morning. I blanked. Now I've got to go home. Group, things have just got worse. Hey, Rod. Come mid to late September, some things had changed at the lake. The fish began following the wind more noticeably, and during the daytime, carp were being caught on the riverbank, a long way from my pre-baited zone. A number of sessions trying to chase the fish around resulted in blanks, and whispers around the lake were that Scott was catching quite a few now. I'm having the big common this time. Oh, comforting. This time. After the last couple of quite disappointing sessions, I'm really hoping that my fortunes change this time. It hasn't been easy. And even when the conditions look perfect, I've still not caught. So I'm going today, the wind is blowing the wrong direction. It's not particularly carpet conditions, but I've just got to be down there. I've got to put in the time. This is the part where I have to just knuckle down and get on with it. Right now the wind is all wrong for my pre-baited swim. Really with this warm weather I want to be on the end of the wind so that that surface water that's lovely and warm and full of natural food is coming in towards my rods and that means probably heading down to the other corner down by the bridge. I spent ages choosing my swim for this visit. My normal spot hadn't produced a fish for a few weeks and Scott had begun catching consistently, fishing out to the inflatables. I settled in a swim I called the corner and despite seeing nothing, began searching for a spot. Well, 
I'm supposed to be getting the rods out right now, but I just got a bit distracted by that. Wow. The park was fascinating. Traditionally, you'd say it wasn't very picturesque, but something about the place had me absolutely obsessed. Even the reports of antisocial behaviour and crimes being committed nearby didn't once deter me. It's beginning to look a lot like a two night blank. Just about to have some porridge this morning and I've caught nothing. It is horrible out there. I'm just... Come on, let there be a bite. Not weeds. The whole time I'm round on this side of the lake though, I am wondering, is my bait being eaten over in the corner? Is that spot getting cleaned out whilst I'm round here? I doubt it. I haven't seen any fish by the pub lately. And if there's no fish by the pub, there's probably not likely to be many fish along that southern bank. There's no way. There is no way. There is no way. Just come off. No, it hasn't. It's still off. Big. No, that has just come off. No. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. I've, I, sorry, I've just lost a really big fish. Oh, my well. Yeah. Oh, oh, you have no idea how much my son adores you, don't you, Harry? <laughs> nice to meet you. How's it going? This is Oliver as well. Hi, how are you doing? There you go. Fantastic. Oliver, do you want to have one as well? Yeah. Um, that was my first bite I've had in about a week of fishing and I just lost it. I'll keep doing the video. Well, so no, cool. I, I will, I will. That's the highlight of my summer holiday. That was a big fish. There's no doubt about it. Come on, Carl, stay positive, stay motivated. Don't get down, don't get down. Stay 100%. The loss of that fish hurt more than normal. It really did feel big. I hate reeling in on a blank. It's just not the one. I decided to up the effort and begin baiting not only my original swim, but out long in front of the inflatables too. Part of me didn't really want to step on Scott's toes, but the bulk of the fish now seemed to be in front of there, and selfishly, I just wanted that big common in my net. Returning from a session, I try to break the spell of this obsession. My goal at the start of the year was to post a new video on my channel every two weeks, but my head wasn't in it, and my mind, well, that was still at the lake. The storm's coming in. When the weather's like this, you just think it's gonna happen. And happen it did. Bites were coming thick and fast, side by side for Scott and myself. Getting through them now, another bite. Surely one of the big ones isn't far off. 
Alternating between the riverbank and my original swim, a stream of fish came my way. But truly, I couldn't compete with Scott's long range ability and casting accuracy. That's one lesson learned this morning. Self takes in the water are a bit risky. I think I'm gonna head round and fish over on the riverbank during the day today. I'd noticed the fish's patrol route from the pub to the riverbank happened most days. And to catch the most fish, I had to move swims twice every 24 hours. The lake's stock was being worked through and fast. Every carp a characterful creature of all shapes and sizes. It was captivating fishing, but one night I found myself in crippling pain once again and had to take myself back to the hospital. This time around I was knocked back completely and ended up needing almost a week to recover before I could even think about going fishing again. In amongst frantically catching up with video editing, meetings and product development, my mind was spinning, literally going round and round in circles. I needed to catch the big common and complete this film, but I also needed to focus again on my business, clean my house, see my girlfriend. I guess you could say some balance needed to return. Some nights I'd find myself not able to sleep and so a three hour drive to lap the lake and put out some bait seemed like the only logical thing to do. Somehow I'd become a little lost in the campaign and with just one fish on my mind, I couldn't let someone else catch it first. Sorry. One night I landed a decent common. Upon first seeing it in the torchlight, I thought it was the one. Once in the net though, I quickly realized it was some 35 pounds smaller than I first thought. Okay, now I'm in the van, driving up to the lake. Probably gonna be fishing by about two in the morning. It is definitely getting late. All right, there's one. <gasps> that's it. That is it. Oh, crikey, that's the big common. Now my swim is actually 600 meters away or so in that direction, but it's the closest I can get to where these carp like to be. And now that I've seen there's so many carp in this area, I feel pretty confident for the night. The swim's taken. The spot that I have been baiting, catching from, and haven't seen anyone fishing for like at least four or five weeks. And someone's fishing there tonight. But there was another way. 25 yards from the van sat the fish of my dreams. A rig quietly lowered in could have the job done in seconds. Yes, it would go against the rules of the park. Rules put in place by people I'll never meet and would never know who I am. It was tempting. In the light of day, these things wouldn't cross my mind, but with my obsession spiraling a little out of control, this was a chance to get it done so I could just go back to normal. So I stood there alone, accompanied only by the wind and my racing thoughts. I 
I could, in that moment, finish my campaign with a near £60 common. But something inside said no. Others might have done it. Young me might have done it. But with the effort I'd put in, and the anglers on the lake I'd grown to respect, I'd have only been cheating myself. Just days later, I was back, confronted by the same fish, once again in the same place. I felt defeated. I have hugely enjoyed my time fishing here. It's been an incredibly special place to, to fish and the carp that I've caught have been unreal. But I have to bite the bullet and move on. <laughs> it, it's, it's just, it's becoming more and more important. I, priorities have just gone out the window in my life and I need some balance to return and I need to keep my business going. And for that, I need to be around more. I need to be more focused. And this, this chapter, for now at least, is over. It's crazy because it's such a special place. And I love it. But I have also just grown to hate it. And I'm not sure why. We all have noise in our minds, a constant chatter of thoughts, feelings and decisions, but every now and then it goes quiet. It's these moments of quiet that I live for. However, the park wasn't giving me that. I continually worried about someone else catching the big common, couldn't stop thinking if someone was fishing my baited spot whilst I was at home, and I found myself frustrated by the moral dilemma of the out of bounds. Sometimes you figure things out by thinking it all through, but this time I was thinking myself round and round in circles, tighter and tighter ones. There's Mr. Lloyd. Scott's also doing a fair bit of time on here at the moment. I think that's one of his camera, camera crew. Chatting with Scott that afternoon, we turned out to be more similar than I first thought. And as the hours passed, I came to realize it wasn't the lake or the rules. It was my obsession. change in the weather that we were waiting for. Although I don't want to get a bite right now. Maybe it was time to see this campaign not as a race against Scots or the other anglers, but instead a journey. A journey I'd enjoy no matter what the outcome. Snagged. Oh, there we go. Got him moving, I think. I'm going to be soaked by the time this goes in the net. Oh, he's woken up now. Wow, he woke up. Damn, it's woken up. It's woken up. Oh, Lord. Wow. There it is.
Oh, no way. No way. No freaking way. Is that? Oh, it is. It is. Oh. Wow. That is so heavy. Seriously big carp. Absolute giant. It's my freaking PB. I've just broken a PB. I'm packing away now. I could stay for a few more nights, but Cal and Tom are coming down to take photos, and I might as well just celebrate. <laughs> I might as well give myself this moment to just smile <laughs> and relax a bit. Because I think that's what I should have done all along. Um, do you want to see the big mirror? Have you got the big mirror? Yeah. Kind of, mate, but I've got three bagged up myself down here. You have? Yeah, man, I've had six. Six in a night? I'm literally can't keep it running, I'm all up one hour and it goes. Oh, fair play. Okay, well, in that case, I'll probably leave you to it. <laughs> how, big, how big's the mirror, mate? Uh, 45 and a bit. Oh, my God. I really did want to see that car, but it's just like, mate, I can't wait what's going on down here. The commons next. The commons next. <laughs> right. Yeah, mate. Oh. What? I know. I know. Look at it. The, the tail is bigger than my, like my, it's bigger than my whole hand. Oh, it's unreal. It's unreal, mate. Wow. <laughs> I'm speechless. Thanks for coming down, guys. Mate, what a fish. With Scott's words ringing in my ears, I did exactly as we'd discussed. Focused on the now, the moment I was in, and wow, it felt good. <laughs> that is a mega fish, mate. Okay, off she goes. <laughs> oh! <laughs> well done. Mate, well done for catching it. Happy, oh. happy days indeed. Fishing is so good, isn't it? I love fishing. Campaign complete. But it wasn't complete. It couldn't be. Not without the big common. Have you had any big ends? No. Might have a couple of 30 pounders. Oh! There. <laughs> no big ends then. No, none of the big ones I've had. Oh, morning. It's kicked off. Uh, she a dirty? Oh, I'm pretty sorry. <laughs> uh, 29 7. Yeah. Sometimes it actually is just as good seeing other people, man. Like doing the doing the photos, watching someone enjoy the moment. It's special. Carp fishing is a special thing. Apart from when you're blank. And yes, of course there were still blanks. Some quiet sessions I resorted to drop shotting for perch to pass the time. Oh no. That's so heavy. I wonder if you've got the pike. Oh, did you see it? Yeah, big pike. Yeah, that's um, that's not the one. That month, I settled into a couple of nights fishing here and there. A gentle approach, but the rewards kept trickling in. Why do you bring me so much luck? Good How lad. do you do that? Good lad. I think it's calm. Oh, wow. It's very strong. Dude. Very strong. <laughs> wow, what a creature. If 
by video, does the bream turn into a car? If this is a common, I'm holding this dorsal. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even think there's a fish there. Ditch you, mate. Look at that. Definitely the common. It's quite long. I bet you're glad you waited for that. Yeah. Well worth the wait. <laughs> oh. Thank you, Donald man. It's okay. Uh, Gentlemen, first time anyone's ever called me that. I've never seen like this big. <laughs> What an incredible evening. I'm really enjoying my fishing down here at the moment. Especially as I've got amongst them lately. Cheers to the lake. Come on the big common. Time ticked slowly towards winter. Water temperatures dropped day by day, and Scott kept catching. Oh, I was so excited. I held on hope, even as the lake got busier, locals knowing that the big one was due. Right, I've got to walk back on them boys out there. Boys are all turning up. Got one lad left to come, which is Carl. I said to him that um, we'd let each other know if he'd rather catch it. You done it, man. Oh. You done it. Right, watch that rig. I'm gonna get the rods back out, mate. Shut up. Yeah. To be recasting after landing the biggest fish in the lake truly showed me Scott's love for the game. Whilst he may have set out to catch the big mirror, Every bite was a thrill, and watching him fish was a pleasure. Oh, my God. Oh, oh my God. Ready? Yeah. Three. Two, one. It really goes out of the way. Fifteen. Eight. Fifteen. 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 Come on, boys, you're not really telling me much. How are you? How's she looking? <laughs> I think we're all speechless. <laughs> It's been a short and brief journey for me and you, mate, but I'm sure we'll, we'll cross paths again. Just three months earlier, I'd met Scott for the first time, and somehow, after catching his dream fish and him landing mine, two strangers had come together. Get in! Cheers, Carl. It was here I realised that had I not got my obsession under control, I couldn't have enjoyed Scott's moment with the big common. Oh! It's why I can honestly now say that passion brings joy and energy to your life, whilst obsession consumes it from the inside out. Bye everybody. Yeah, See you soon.